Comrade, strength is the ability of your muscle to generate tension. One way to do that is by training with heavy weights. But that's not necessary, not always necessary. You can get great resistance by playing with your leverage, weight distribution, etc. It's possible to modify innocent exercises such as push-ups or dive bomber push-ups, favorite of US Navy SEALs, into very tough one-arm drills. This video will show you how to go beyond push-ups. Comrades, I'm going to demonstrate the sad scene that usually passes for the one-arm push-up. <clears throat> not sure what it's called, but it's not a one-arm push-up. In order for this to qualify as a one-arm push-up, first of all, the chest must hit, must hit the deck, number one. Number two, the shoulders must stay parallel to the deck, observe. And the feet should not be splayed way too wide. That's how you do it. Comrade, I don't care if you can do 100 push-ups. If you specifically don't practice 100 push-ups, you will not be able to do them because you need that core strength for it. The best way to work up to the one-arm push-up is by doing them with your hand elevated. That way more weight shifts to your feet and makes the drill easier. Observe. As you get stronger, lower the elevation. Or you can make your one-arm push-ups miserable by elevating your feet. Comrade, it's critical that you get high abdominal tension for the one-arm push-up. This must be contracted very intensely. The glutes must be tight and your tail must be tucked in. This is what in gymnastics is called the hollow position. This is one fine drill that's going to help you to master that. Get in that position, in the push-up position, and walk out. Tuck in, tight, 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 and then walk forward. Do not let your back sag like this because that defeats the purpose of the drill. Now here's another variation of this exercise. Walk out as far as you can while maintaining the hollow position and turn side to side, observe. That strengthens your obliques. Comrade, as in the military press, it's critical that you keep your legs strong and tight during the one-arm push-up. What you do is you straighten out your leg, completely lock the knee, pull up your kneecap, that means contract the quad, pull up the groin muscle, pull up the side, pull up the glute, pull everything up, make your legs rigid. Like this. Comrade, as I said before, the abs and glutes must be tight and the tail must be tucked in. In karate, sometimes they say, point the belly button slightly up, but do it in a way without bending your knees. See, like this, point it slightly up. This will contract. This will tuck in. Breathing, it's important that you have high pressure in your abdomen when you're exerting yourself, which means you're on the bottom of the push-up. How do you do that? As you inhale, it's easiest to inhale on the top before you go down. You inhale into your belly, not in your chest, none of this business, into your stomach, keep your energy down. Then you pressurize. How do you pressurize? You pull up your butt, which means uh, stopping yourself from going to the bathroom. And you kind of, kind of grunt. You see, everything gets really tight. Then you keep that tension down there. Then you go down and you really grunt as you come up. Observe what it looks like in the push-up. You take a breath. Just like this. Don't start out all relaxed and saggy like a semi-dead cow. Tighten up first. Brace for the load. It means you gotta tighten everything up. You gotta tighten up your shoulder really hard. 
tighten up biceps, triceps, armpit especially. Pack, lat, all these muscles get very tight. Forearm, grip the deck with your hand, with your fingers. Keep your palms solidly planted. Everything very tight. Then inhale and go down and watch the difference. Dead start push-ups are excellent at teaching you and, and generate full body tension, the skill that comes in handy in any type of exertion. Tighten up, press. If you don't tighten up every muscle in your body, the thighs, the glutes, the abs, the pecs, the armpits, lats, everything, you will not get up. It's simple as that. Enjoy. Oftentimes, a guy, even a strong guy, tries to do one arm push up. He gets down about halfway. He can't get any deeper. He falls or he hurts his shoulder. He says, the exercise is not good. His technique is not good. Here's what you got to do. Instead of yielding passively to gravity, you need to actively pull yourself into the deck. Actively pull like you're doing a lateral. Also, don't let the shoulder stick out like this. You see? Keep your shoulder sucked in right in here. That makes a difference. Comrade, note this spot on your hand. This spot right here. Take your knuckle and press against this spot. You find something very interesting. Your triceps automatically contracts like you press the button. Try to put as much weight as possible in that spot when you perform your push-up. It's tricky, but at the same time, you also got to plan the rest of your hand solid as well. So nothing comes off. It's like a suction cup, but most weight is still exactly at that spot. Like this, in a flat. It's very strong. In addition to that, you must grip the deck. Grip it as hard as you can. It's not a fingertip push-up. Your palm is still flat. But you're gripping the deck so your fingertips turn white. That's what you got to do. See the difference. Don't grip so hard on the way down. Grip a little on the way down. And grip very hard on the way up. A threaded weapon is superior to a flat barrel one because the spiraling bullet has a lot more stability. The same way, if you apply a corkscrew, if you apply a corkscrew to your technique, you'll have more stability and more power. Instead of pushing straight down or pulling straight down when you're getting down, try to apply this from inside out corkscrew, like you're trying to screw your shoulder into the socket. Notice the difference. Your shoulder joint will be unloaded and you're going to have much more power and stability. Note how the elbow just moves right in. Comrade, finally, the ultimate one arm push up. The one arm, one leg push up. Enjoy. The one arm, one legged push up is an exercise in total tension. Here's one way to develop it elevate one arm and one leg while staying tight. Keep your stomach tight, keep your butt tight, grip the deck, tuck everything in, stay tight, balance just like this. Get very tight. You should feel a line of tension going through from this hand to that foot while uh, going through right through the stomach. And make sure the food doesn't roll on the side. Finally, the one arm, one leg push up. Comrade, before you start practicing one arm push ups, you have to understand that your strength session is a practice, not a workout. What does it mean? 
You are learning to generate greater tension in your muscles. You are learning to get stronger. That means you can practice often, much more often than you think. Ideally, practice every day, even throughout the day. But don't kill yourself. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. If, for instance, you can do five push-ups of a certain kind, do only one or two. If you can do ten, do only five. If you can do more than that, advance to a more challenging push-up. And make sure to follow the sequence, to follow the progression outlined for you. Comrade, the one-armed dive bomb. Enjoy. Comrade, follow these steps to work up to a legit one-arm dive bomber push-up. The first step is the one-arm pump or prakachka, a popular exercise among Russian martial artists. This drill develops flexibility, develops strength, and helps you with finding the proper alignment. Here's what you do. You get in this position with one arm, and then without bending your elbow, you go forward until you're in this position. You'll find that, hmm, maybe there could be a better hand placement. So you experiment with a hand placement. Then you start again, usually slightly off, off to the side. Push your butt way back, grip the deck with your fingertips, palm flat, then go forward, squeeze the cheeks, look up, push back. Try it on the other arm. Push back. Get the hips low, find this position, find this really comfortable and solid position. You should feel power projecting from your armpit. And push back. The one arm pump will help you to find the proper alignment and develop many important muscles for the dive bomber, one arm dive bomber push up. The next step is to develop more shoulder strength with a half bomber push up, where you go down only to the point where your chest brushes the deck and then go back up. Observe. Comrades, it's extremely important when you perform your half bomber push ups, dab bomber push ups, even regular one arm push ups, almost any type of press, that you generate this corkscrew type action. What you gotta do is you gotta take your arm and just do this. You see, imagine you're trying to screw your arm into the socket. It's like you're trying to break some object that tightens up your lats, that tightens up your pecs, and it keeps you very stable. That generates a lot of power, a lot of stability. Do that on the way down like this, and do it even more on the way up. Observe. You should have noticed that when we perform your dive bomber push-ups, or have bombers, the angle of descent goes like this. You're not going straight down, you're going down at an angle as if you're going heading under a fence. So the movement of your arms and shoulders is very similar to that of the military press. So think of doing this, performing the military press as you're pushing up. On the other hand, when you're going down, think of pulling. You see, pull yourself down. Now here's a couple of techniques that are going to help you to develop more strength in the bottom position. One technique is the two-hand, one-leg dive bomber push-up. Notice how these elbows are coming in. Notice how I'm pulling. There's this corkscrew action. Or you can do the half bomber the same fashion. Partial moves on the very bottom are also very helpful. So get in the sticking point right here and keep working it. Sticking point and keep working it. Or in two legs, the same way. Just the sticking point. 
the one-legged two-arm dive bomber push-up. or the half bomber. The important thing is to pay attention to this corkscrew action. I'm pulling myself down, I'm pushing myself back. Another effective technique is to work on your sticking point. Get here and back. Just work the sticking point. Also, putting one hand on top of the other will help you get to the one leg, or rather one arm, that bomber, like this. Enjoy. Comrade, say goodbye to high reps. Be strong anywhere you go. Hit the deck. Give me one arm push ups. Comrade, enter the pistol or the one-legged squat, the leg exercise of choice of the Russian Special Forces. It's a great tactical exercise. You can do it anywhere, and you can adapt this drill to any, absolutely any level of strength. This tape will show you how to go from zero to hero. <laughs> Comrade, start your mastery of the pistol by squatting to the box. Choose a box of the height which you can sit down and control. Stack something. Make sure those things don't slide. It can be those aerobic steps. It can be apple crates, whatever it is, as long as they don't move. Get in this position and sit back and ah, fell through. That's not good. That means that this box is too low for you. Let's try it again, but first give it 20 push-ups. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, here I am. Sit down and get up. Let's try this again. I sit back, back. Don't go this way. Don't go straight down. Don't let your knee slip forward. You got to sit back. That's what you got to do. You see, you got to push your butt back and keep most of your weight in your heel. Here it is. Here's the box. Push your weight back, back, back. Ugh. Okay, still kind of falling through slightly. What do we do about that? To get more in control, you need to learn to contract these muscles right here. So when you're going down, you gotta pull actively with these muscles. Like you're pulling yourself down into the hole. Try that. This muscle stays tight, tight, tight. Push your butt back, pull, pull, pull. There we go, you're in control. Rock forward slightly and stand up. Let's try it again. Oh, slipping forward, that's not good either. Your foot should stay planted, solidly planted. So when you're getting up, you must make a point of very solidly pressing your entire foot, just like this, into the deck. So here you are squatting, rocking forward, pressing hard. There we go. That's how this works. If you find that you easily fall back, chances are that you're either keeping your hip flexor too loose or you're not reaching forward far enough. You see, it's an issue of balance. If you try to be upright, you'll just fall. You got to keep your hands in front of you. Keep your hands in front of you, reach way forward, sit back, sit back, sit back, rock back, rock forward, push down hard, and get up. Okay, this seems all right. Let's lower the box. Sit back, sit back, sit back, sit back. Not bad. Don't drop on the box. And get up. Kind of wobbly, unbalanced. What do we do about that? Grip the deck with your toes. Just grip the ground, just like this. See how this works out for you. It's much better control, isn't it? Now, let's add one more element for better control. Pull up your muscles in the thigh. Pull up your kneecap, just like this. Pull up the muscles in the groin, like you're rolling up into the groin. Pull up the glute. Pull everything up, just like this. Tighten up. And as you tighten up, Pull yourself down with this muscle, grip the deck, complete control, and get up. As you're getting better, keep going in a lower and lower box.
But even if you find that you can squat from a really low box, don't necessarily discard a higher one. Sometimes it's really good to work one level. You find one level you're sticking at, let's say. Let's see. Uh, this seems like a hard position. Find that position, and you squat in this position. Enjoy. A couple of variations. If you have a hard time balancing, you may hold on a light weight in front of you. This is going to help you balance and it's going to help you use your glutes much better, which are really powerful muscles. But on the other hand, if you take a heavier weight, this makes the exercise harder. Makes sense, doesn't it? One more thing I want to show you is how to minimize soreness by de-emphasizing the negative. It's when you're going down that your muscles being torn up. That's going to make you sore. This is going to slow down your recovery. Builds muscle too, though. You can go down on two legs and de-emphasize the negative. It looks like this. Just go down, lift one leg up, and get up. Go down, no stress at all, and get up. Just an option. Comrade, eventually, work up to the point where you can do the rocking squat. Off the deck. Observe. You sit back. You rock back. You shift your weight back. To make it even harder, you completely relax. Then you rock forward, and you drive really hard with your foot into the deck. And then you get up. To make this harder yet, you rock forward slowly. Observe. Enjoy. Comrade, the airborne lunge is the variation of the one-legged squat. It's an exercise in its own right, and it's also going to help you to get better at the pistol. Observe. So all you do is lunge, except, except your foot, the other foot remains airborne. That makes really all the difference. As you get down, you may find hard yourself having a hard time getting down. You just get out of bounds. So what you do again is you grip the deck with your toes. You pull up these muscles right here. You pull yourself with this muscle. That's how you control yourself. Tighten up. Pull yourself. Pull yourself. Don't let your heel come off. Touch the deck without hitting it. And push and get back up. This is where you can learn a very valuable lesson of the power of tension. Try this. Just the moment you're reversing the movement, make fists. Make tight fists. Notice what's going to happen. You get down. You'll notice an immediate boost. As you make fists, tension goes from your hands into other parts of your body, immediately making it stronger. It's very easy to test. You get down. You pause. Make a fist and get back up. Feel free to use this technique on all your one-legged squats. If you do fall through, if you get down it, you collapse. Don't hurt your knee. You shouldn't be doing this. Try to do the airborne lunge of an elevation. Rather, lower your knee to an elevation. Or, you can increase the difficulty of the airborne lunge by standing on the block and increasing the range of motion. Once you have got pretty good at box pistols and airborne lunges, you may try the regular pistol. Observe. Notice that we're not bouncing. Mostly, when people do the one-legged squat, they do it like this. Well, sure, it's a lot easier. Plus, it's harder on the knee. We want to make it hard and safer. That's why we pause. But when you pause, you stay tight. You stay tight on the bottom. 
So you pull yourself down just the way you did during the airborne lunge or the box squat. You reach forward. You get down all the way. Don't fall over. You really need to reach forward to balance yourself out. If you're flexible enough, you may try this. Yes, comrades, we do full squats. Tell those nervous Nellies who are afraid of doing full squats to just go back to their hypochondria. You must do full squats. You must improve your strength through full range of motion. You must have that flexibility. And the way we do protect the knee is by proper alignment, pulling with the hip flexor, sitting back, not letting the heel come up. Pay attention to details. At no point your knee should be bowing in. The knee should always be pointing in the direction of your foot. Try not to let extend your knee forward too much. Keep your shin as close to vertical as possible. You should not feel any discomfort in your knee. It's the contraction of the hip flexors, the muscles on top of your thigh, that does protect your knee. You might have a hard time holding your free leg up. You might even start cramping right here. Well, tell someone who cares. Still, there's one technique that's going to help you hold your leg airborne. Instead of simply thinking of pulling it up, Think of pushing it forward. You see, as your body's going back, your leg is just pushing forward, forward, forward. Try this, observe. So keep pushing, 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 just like this. Keep pushing it forward. That's going to be a lot easier, and it's a lot less likely to cramp through hip flexors. Needless to say, work on your hamstring flexibility also is going to help. Comrades, practice your one-legged squats in flat shoes without a cushion. Shoes such as wrestling shoes or boots. Finally, when you're ready for it, move on to barefoot. Barefoot training offers many advantages, strengthening your ankles, making you stronger, etc., etc. Observe. Grip the deck with your toes. Barefoot training is where it's at. Comrades, power breathing. You may inhale either on the way down or while you're standing up. The exhalation, that's a little bit more tricky. At the hardest point of the exercise, generally in the hole when you're sitting, rock bottom, you need to pressurize the abdomen, which means grunt. Also, when you inhale, you need to pull up your butt. It's like you're trying to stop, trying to stop yourself from relieving yourself. Sounds goofy, but trust me, it works. And at the same time, then you grunt and make fists. That makes really all the difference, observe. That's called power breathing. As with a box squat, if you have a hard time balancing, you may hold a light weight in front of you. Reach way forward with the weight. For more pain, hold a kettlebell in front of you. Observe. To make it harder yet, hold the kettlebell on the front squat rack. Enjoy. You may do your pistols explosively, followed by a jump. Comrade, a few words on training. First and foremost, for the most of your training, keep your repetitions to five and under because low repetitions are best for building strength. Do not train to failure. It's unnecessary and counterproductive. You may train every day if you wish, but make sure that you vary the difficulty of your training. For instance, today you may do multiple sets of five in the normal pistol going rock bottom. That's going to get you pretty tired. And tomorrow, 
you do a few sets of three in the airborne lunge, which you find fairly easy. The day after, you'll do some pistols with a kettlebell held in front of you. And then, the day after, you'll work on the box where you lower yourself to the depths that you find fairly challenging. That's an example of variation. One day you do 25 total reps, the next day you do 10 total reps. The day after, you do 50 reps total. Just varied. That's really important. Another very powerful approach to improving your leg power is the grease the groove technique. What it means is simply doing your one-legged squats throughout the day while staying fresh, maximally fresh. For example, if you can do five reps, five good clean reps, you just do a single rep, one or two reps here and there throughout the day. It's amazing how quickly it adds up. It's amazing how quickly it builds strength. If you choose to do repetitions higher than five and work on your endurance, first of all, never train to failure. Stop long time before your muscles fail. It's an issue of safety. Second, you need to learn how to pace your tension, which means using the techniques of pulling the hip flexors, etc., etc., early on, but not too much, not using yourself up and only drawing all your maximum tension resources towards the end. Let's say this would be your first rep, so you don't really try too hard, and the last rep, when you're really trying all out, it would look like this. That's called pacing the tension and pacing the breaths. Very important technique. Very powerful tool in developing your endurance is called the ladder. The ladder is very popular in the Russian Special Forces. Here's what you do. You do one rep and rest briefly. Then you do two. Then you do three, four, five, or whatever. Then you start all over. It kills you. Comrade, if you've ever tried to squat from the pins on the bottom of the power rack, you notice how much harder it is to squat that way rather than going down and then coming up. The difference is in storing the tension. You stored the tension the way down, then you reuse the tension. It makes your life easier. What if you go up without you reusing the tension? It makes it very horrible. Try the Renegade Pistol by comrade Coach John Davis. Observe. Go down on one leg, then switch feet, and then get up. You'll find that because you start from zero tension, it's a lot harder. So you got to do is you get down and tighten up as you're planting the other foot, and then you get up. To practice this exercise, you could try one-legged squats with a de-emphasized negative. At this point, there's no point in going down, staying really tight, because you can't use that tension anyway. So get down like this, get the other one leg out, and get up. This drill is also excellent when you're trying to recover. Let's see if you're a little bit sore. If you want to train more often, just go down on two and get up at one. And finally, the Cossack pistol, where you go down into the rock bottom position, then explosively swish feet. Your heels stay flat on the deck. Note the breathing. You must pressurize the breath. Explosively exhale as you're kicking out with one of the legs. Observe. Power to you. One U.S. president said, do what you can with what you have or where you are. He must have been referring to the pistol. Say goodbye to the excuses for weak legs.